Now we are going to have the women's FA final between Rodan Gafar from the University of the Incarnate Word and and Jocelyn Ratzloff. They both won very close back and forth bouts in their semifinals. And so we'll see who... Oh, that's interesting. This is the first match that we've seen on stream, or I think today at all actually, which is a French grip versus a pistol grip. And so this, this matchup can be extremely volatile. It depends a lot on how well the pistol grip fencer can control the, the placement of the blade by the French grip fencer. And if they can, they'll score a lot of touches on pair repost. And if they cannot, they tend to get counterattacked a lot. So we'll, like I said, we'll see what happens here. And there's no way to know how that will play out before you actually see it happen. I know that Gafar is very good at getting close distance pair reposts, but that doesn't really happen a whole lot with, with French grip fencing because a lot of what they do is about keeping the other person far away from them. But maybe if she goes for a flesh or something, that's something you'll see from Gafar. Slav is keeping her point low, possibly indicating that she could threaten the foot. The foot is a difficult target to hit. You have to be very precise because it's a very narrow target, and so it's quite easy to miss. So both of these two are not really comfortable attacking the other person confidently yet. And in Epe, if you go for a minute without any touches scored, you see what's called a non-combativity card, which it's possible we're about to see that. And we're going to non-combativity. So essentially what this means is that the first time it's nothing. They each get a non-combativity yellow card um, because the score is tied. But if that happens again, the person who is charged with non-combativity will get a red card. A third offense will be a red card. And the fourth offense is the person who's the lower seed coming into the tournament is actually knocked out of the tournament if they refuse to fence for three full minutes. But that's only... The cards are only rewarded, awarded to the person who is losing. So from now on, Gafar can basically just relax and camp and Ratzlaff has to come to her. And if Ratzlaff fails to make a touch happen within a minute period, she loses a touch automatically. So she's really going to be forced to be proactive. And the clock started, I was going to say at 1.51, but now the clock started at 1.43. So she has until 0.43 to make a touch happen. And that was a double, so it doesn't advance her progress anymore. I'm not sure what she's asking about. Normally French grip fencers will keep their tip very close to the wrist of the other person, like th she's doing right there. And this is what I was saying about how Gafar wants to keep her point away. So the game is usually how close can I keep my point versus how well can you keep your point away from me. Which could be why she's leaving her blade low a lot of the time. And some of the more interesting parts of Epe are happening in the intricacies of the tiny little blade motions that they're making to, for like Ratzlaff to keep her point on the target, which is kind of lost in the dimension of the camera that we have. But there's nothing we can really do about that because unless you have one from directly behind them, in which case you can't see the distance between them, which is also important, you don't get to see that aspect of the fencing. So now it's at 102. So Ratzlaff will be punished if there are two seconds left and the score is still one to three. Oh, 
Oh, nice attempt at a touch by Gafar. That looked like a very good tempo, but Rotsov was able to move out of the way and counterattack at the same time. So that's something that Gafar will have to be careful of. It's also something that French grip fencers are very well known for, being able to land the point on the forearm and the, and the high arm in order to stop incoming attacks against them. And you see again, Gafar is doing those tiny little blade motions to keep Ratzlaff off of her, Ratzlaff's point off of her wrist. It's a little more aggressive attempt to hit the wrist. Ratzlaff no longer has to worry about priority, um, non-combativity in this period. And there's only 10 seconds left, so. Three seconds. Time. So I think Ratzlaff needs to push and pull the distance a little bit more. She is doing it a little bit. She puts a lot of pressure on and then she takes it off and then puts it on again and takes it off. But I think she should apply pressure for smaller periods of time so that she can kind of desensitize Gafar to her movements. And Ratzlaff hasn't really tried to do any committed actions like fleshes or anything. It might be good to throw in one action like that just to show Gafar that she has to worry about that action as well. A little more variety will make her have to consider an additional variable when it comes to defending herself. She also only tried to hit the foot once, and that's another powerful threat from French grip fencers is the ability to attack short target. And Gafar is defending her wrist extremely well, but she's not defending her foot very well. So I guess she hasn't really had the need to, but the one time Ratzlaff tried to hit the foot, she didn't get parried or countered by something that Gafar was doing, she just missed. So I think that that's something that she could take advantage of more. And Gafar needs to do the exact same thing that she has been doing. It's been working for her. A one touch lead is still a lead and in Epe any lead causes the defending fencer to have to, I'm sorry, the, um, the currently losing fencer to fence differently than they were before. Are tested with um, small metallic pieces of equipment called shims, and her blade passed all three tests, so we're ready to go. Oh, nice surprise touch coming off the line. That was a very smart way to start this bout. Maybe both athletes were feeling a little bit cold. Maybe um, Gafar was not quite ready for that one, but that was a really, really smart surprise touch there and now the score is tied so they can both afford to wait a little bit um, non-combativity is no longer as much of an issue as it was before because now if non-combativity is called both fencers would be penalized but as i say that that <laughs> that no longer becomes the case again so now Rotzlaff is down and so non-combativity will become an issue for her if she can't score within the next minute And Gafar is probably pretty ready to defend her own foot at this point. And in addition to being w ready and very capable of defending her hand, as we see, she's keeping that tip off of her. She's not really making contact with the blade, which could be a problem for her, because if she can't successfully keep Rostov away from her wrist, she may be risking getting hit on the wrist. And time will expire, and Rostov will be pe sorry, not time will expire. Time on nice touch. That was really good. She went for the foot, which Gafar pulled back and thought she could punish, but Ratzlaff moved her body out of the way in such a way that the point just barely missed and she was able to counterattack her to the upper arm. Oh, that was risky. Ratzlaff has done a really good job counterattacking Gafar's incoming attacks. And again, non-combativity for one specific fencer is off the table because the score is now tied at 4-4. This is a very interesting epee bout because, like I said, it will mostly be determined by the French gripper's ability to get in and the uh, pistol gripper's ability to keep them out. And so Gafar is doing a, a good job of keeping her out, but it's not really capitalizing, or not really, cap not, not really not capitalizing, but not really able to create many consistent setups of her own to score touches. So all she's able to do is consistently keep Ratzlaff away from her wrist. 
Oh, nice touch, but she keeps getting a little bit greedy and counterattack like that. So this is a very low scoring FA bout. Because neither of them feel confident in doing the things that they're used to doing, which are scoring them touches. So they're both choosing to wait. Um, if I were Gafar, I'd be a little less proactive even when I'm up. Not a very entertaining style, but that is the style that's working for her. Uh, she is typically doing well when she capitalizes on one of Ratzlaff's mistakes instead of trying to do something herself and getting her own mistake punished. Like that is a risky action for her because in the past that action has been counterattacked. This time she was able to finish and turn that counterattack into a double, but it was close. Although I guess any double in Epe is, <laughs> is going to be pretty close. With only four milliseconds in order to get your light on, a four millisecond difference between those two to get your light on. Careful on that one. Yeah, so she's not, she's not giving her the ability to score, but she's not really able to punish that either. This was one of the first more aggressive actions from Rostov that we've seen so far. It was a double. I think it was the third really highly committed action she's made. The first one was to the foot, which missed. The second one was to the foot in the beginning of this period. And the third one was that one right there. Oh, that. Rostov should be upset about that touch, and she is. The reason for that is because Gafar was in an off-balance position, chose to flesh, missed, and Rostov missed both opportunities to get a valid counterattack. So that one hurts a little bit. They're going to just let this period go so they can go back and talk to their coaches. Rostov's coach is Ari Simmons, the commentator who was in the box a little bit earlier for the uh, men's epe and women's foil finals. And now he is giving her some advice. Gafar is by herself at the moment. Um, oh, I see. And her coach is coming up to her right now. Gafar is from the University of the Incarnate Word. And the coach is John Morrow, a bit of a legend in the fencing world. He actually holds the record for the oldest person ever to win the Open National Championships which I believe he did at the age of 50 years old in Epe, which is pretty amazing. And because Epe has a metagame that doesn't change very quickly, that knowledge that he still has is extremely relevant. Whereas in Saber or Foil, the metagame changes a lot um, to the point that sometimes it's unrecognizable as the same sport like five or six years later. That knowledge of of when you were successful is a lot less potent. But in Epe, the knowledge is valid for quite a long time. So having once been a phenomenal fencer, I'm sure that he can give some really, really pointy advice, as can Ari, who is a current top fencer. That was a nice touch. She punished a little bit of an overcommitment from Ratzlaff with a parry and a very short repost so that there was no time for the counterattack that Ratzlaff has been scoring a lot of her touches on. And you see Gafar is very willing to give up distance. She's not going to take any risks. At least it would be smart not to at this point while she's winning and still scoring touches defensively. And in this bout, you can really see how much a two-touch lead is worth. So doing what she's doing is a little bit risky. <laughs> she's frustrated that she made contact but did not get a touch. In Epi, you need to compress the tip, so just making contact with the opponent is not enough. It needs to be solid contact. That was nice. She came in with a counterattack, but it was a duck counterattack. So she put pressure on Gafar to make her try to attack and then ducked under that attack in order to score. Ducking is very important 
to throw in occasionally because like I was saying before, it's just one extra variable you have to consider when you're making an attack on someone who is known for ducking. That was another nice holding parry. That was the kind of close distance parry I was saying in the beginning of the bout might be something that, that's the close distance parry I was talking about as well. So that was an infighting situation, but because they made contact with each other significantly before the actual hit occurred, there is no touch. Korokor stops the action immediately unless one of the fencers has a right to repose. Neither of them did in that case because they missed their first repose in both situations. And so it's no touch and back to fencing with the score still 10-8. Another close distance parry. I think she's getting, oh, I was gonna say, I think she's getting a lot more confident with that action, but maybe a little too confident because she just tried it, a, a, she just tried it three times in a very short period of time. And the third time, Ratzlaff was able to successfully defend herself from that action. Double touch, so nothing done for Ratzlaff, but that is a gain for Gafar, getting a little bit closer to the end of the bout. And if she can double out four more times and win about 15 14, she's very happy to do that, so. It's that close distance parry again. She's putting a lot more pressure on Roslov's blade now. Another double. Nine more seconds and non-combativity is off the table. Because in the third period, you can't get non-combativity um, after, you can't get non-combativity with more than a minute and at the end of the third period, there's no more periods left. Double touch again, 13-12 brings us a little closer to that score mark of 15 that you need to get to close out the bout. And I think that unless this bout becomes tied and neither of them want to force an action, this will not go to time because Rotslav has to make something happen. Another nice close distance parry. Another nice close distance parry. She's so good at landing that repost. And now here is where Epe gets the most exciting. When there's only 30 seconds left and you're down by two touches, left is gonna have to hustle a little bit. Maybe she won't start hustling immediately, but she has to make something happen. If you think about it like this, she only has 15 seconds to score a touch twice. Double will end this bout. And Rodena Gafar is your Mountain Pacific Sports Federation Women's Epe Individual Champion. And again, so much respect between the two athletes. Oh, put that blade down. Let's not have an unfortunate accident here. It's such a cool thing about sports that when you're competing, you have to rein in your emotions and just focus on what's happening on the strip. But once the bout is over, you can let all those emotions out. And it's really beautiful to see how happy the winners are in this situation and how happy their teammates are for them. And especially winning the first championship at her home college of University of the Incarnate Word probably means a little bit more to her. <laughs> That's great.